Hi everyone, it's Katrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique, and if you've been following along with some of my more recent videos, I have just uh, posted a video on how to create this lovely pair of earrings. And the first part of the series, I showed you guys how to make the component here with the Rivoli. And so I've been working along the same project line, and I made this adorable ring with this really pretty unique band here. That's what it looks like when you put it on. Yeah, I fell in love with it. And so now I'm working on a pendant component because I only had one more of my beautiful Swarovski tor uh, Topaz Ripley's left. And so I've been working on making a, p a pendant with this part. So if you would like to make one of these with me or the pair of earrings, you can check back to the uh, Queen Victoria earrings, corsage earrings video, which is what I named the earrings, and follow the first part of it and build your little component. Now what we're going to do is carry the embellishments a little further on this component in order to create a beautiful pendant. I'm coming out of this little topaz 3 millimeter bicomb. I've picked up five of my seed beads. I'm going to skip over this turquoise bicone and go into my next topaz bicone following my thread path. And just take your time getting into the hole. And pull. And what I've done is position these little five gold beads around the outside edge of the turquoise bicone. And all I'm going to do is continue that same exact step all the way around. Pick up five, skip the turquoise bicone, go into the next topaz bicone, and pull. And continue on till you come all the way back around to your original starting point. So I've come back around. I've got my last five seed beads on my needle. I'm skipping over my last turquoise crystal and going into the topaz crystal on the other side. And pulling all, all my beads into position. And now I'm going to step up and I'm going to pass my needle up through the first three seed beads of the first five I added in this round. And you can see that I've stepped up here and I'm in position to add some more embellishments. Be careful when you're doing this not to get your thread hung on your other crystals or uh, your other uh, sets of embellishment. And this is what you should have so far. Now, I had a little change of heart here on my design idea. So instead of stepping up into the third seed bead at the top of the first round of five, I actually pushed off on through all five of those seed beads. I picked up one of my 11 0 tortoiseshell beads and I put it on my needle and I went through the next five gold seed beads. I picked up another tortoiseshell 11 went through the next five seed beads. And so I'm just going to continue on like this until I've gone all the way around my component, positioning the one little turquoise bead in between my sets of five gold seed beads till I've come around the entire outside edge of my component. As you're working, your beads are going to have a tendency to try to flip up over the top edge of your bicone. What I want you to do is um, take your time as you're working around and manipulate the tension so that your gold seed beads sit in the position here on the outside edge of the turquoise crystal. And then just come back before you add your last 11 of seed bead. 
So now I've come back around and I'm getting ready to add my last little 11 0 seed bead. I'm coming out of my five gold seed beads, the previous set. And I go right up through my next set and was able to get through three, which is what I've pretty much done all the way around was went through three and then worked down the next two. And the reason that I'm trying to make my little gold seed beads sit closer to the outside edge is because it, if you'll remember from my other video when we created the component, I love the way that the component has this little raised edging to it here on the bezel and it really gives it a more heirloomy romantic floral look and I'm trying to keep that same look for the pendant and here's what I have so far so now for my next round of embellishment I'm coming out of this third gold seed bead I've went ahead and picked up on my needle two 15 old a 15 0 Duracoat Galvanized Deep Gold Seed Beads, one 4 millimeter Preciosa Smoky Topaz Crystal, and two more of my little gold 15 0s. I'm coming out of this 15 0 here at the center of these five. I'm going to go straight into the third bead of the next set of five seed beads that we added two rounds ago. And I'm going to pull. And this is what my bead work looks like. And I'm just going to keep on doing that same step, picking up two galvanized gold, one smoky topaz crystal, two my little 15 0 galvanized deep gold, going straight into the third bead of the next set. And I'm going to do this all the way around my component. And before I add my last uh, crystal on, I'll come back and we'll discuss about how we want to place a bail. Once again on this round, I'm finding that as I'm adding my crystals uh, and seed bead sets, I'm having to work with my tension to make sure that my crystals uh, follow along with this little bit of a bumped effect out here, lacy edging effect that I'm trying to maintain throughout this uh, set of jewelry. So just as you pull, Keep working your thread and your tension so that your component forms the way that you want it to, like so. Alright, so I come back around and I've got my last little set on my needle, 215 O's, my Smoky Topaz 4mm, and my next 215 O's. I'm going to pass through the third seed bead in that set, a grouping of five that we originally placed on the outside edge of our component. Pull that into position and now I have to step up. I'll need to go through the two 15 O's and the crystal that I have added at the first of this round and pull my thread through. And now I've stepped up and all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to work my way through all of my seed beads and crystals around this entire outside edge and reinforce it really well so my uh, component will hold its shape better and my uh, my work will be nice and secure considering that I've got so many uh, sharp edge crystals on it. So just I'm coming out of the crystal I need to go through the two seed beads the third little seed uh, the middle seed bead of the original set of five we added like that And then up the two C beads, crystal two C beads of this previous round. In that fashion, we'll just keep working in a little bit of an up and down motion, remembering to snag that seed bead in the center of the first group of fives that we added each time as you're reinforcing your work. And as you're working, pull nice and tight. All right, I'm going to continue my reinforcement and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I've come back through all nine sets of these crystals and seed beads added in my previous round, and I'm going to go through one more set. So I'm coming out of this four millimeter, I'm going to pass down through the two seed beads and the third seed bead from the set of five we originally added. And then I'm going to pass up through the two seed beads in the crystal next in line. 
And I'm going to pull everything nice and snug. And at this point, I'm going to take a moment to uh, shape my component the way that I want it to look. And this is what I have. And it's really, really pretty. My lighting is really bad today. It's very cloudy and rainy here. And I've been trying all day to get the lighting a little better, but it's not working out so great. And anyhow, I didn't want that to slow me down any. And now I'm going to create my bale. And this is just going to be a loop of beads, you know, that we'll use to hang our pendant from a chain, beaded chain, or a deep gold, beautiful color chain like this, which is what I'm going to be using for the necklace portion of my set. And so I'm coming out of my crystal on the right-hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a loop, but I'm also going to use a pretty wire protector as well and give this piece a really polished and professional finished look to it. All right, so in order to create my bale and finish up my project, I've picked up four of my gold 150C beads on my needle. My thread is coming out here on the right of this crystal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my wire protector and I'm going to position it so that the open end of the horseshoe faces down above my crystal. Just like that. And I'm going to pull this on down. Just like that right there. And now I'm going to come down the other side of my wire protector. Back towards my beadwork. You know, I'm going to pull everything into position and snug it all up right down here, right next to my beadwork, where I want everything to sit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down through just that top seed bead closest to my wire protector, and then I'm going to pull it all into position one more time. And this is what I have. I have three seed beads coming out of the side of my crystal and a fourth seed bead here. I up, went up into my wire protector, went around, make sure my thread positioned itself in the little groove here at the top of my wire protector, came back down the other side, went into this seed bead one more time, and now I'm going to pick up three more gold seed beads. And then all I'm going to do at that point is go back through my crystal from the opposite side and close my bale. And as you work, pull everything into position really nice. And we're going to reinforce this whole little section. I'm going to flip my work over. So now my thread's on the left, coming out of this crystal. I'm going to pass back up through all four of the seat beads on the left-hand side. I'm going to go into my wire protector from the right-hand side on the diagonal. Pull my thread. I'm going to come around the outside edge of my wire protector to the left hand side. And I'm going to crisscross back down through my center bead and the three seed beads on the right hand side of my crystal and pull my thread. And when I do this, I'm going to just double check and make sure that my thread fell into the little groove. And it did. Now, to really finish it off and make it look really nice, I'm just going to take a pair of flat nose pliers and I'm going to just gently and slowly squeeze my wire protector uh, ends together above the little 15 OC bead here at the top of my unit. Just like that. And now I'm coming out over here on the right hand side and I need to just go back into my crystal from right to left. And my, knee, my thread got hung up, so you really need to be careful when you're making this component not to let your thread hang up on your crystals. And this is what I have, and this is what the back looks like. You can see I have that nice little cupping action going on here on my crystals, and when I flip it over, this is what my finished pendant looks like. 
and it's really really pretty and now I'm going to just work this thread down up uh, into the C beads on this side of my crystal and tie a couple of half hitch knots so I'm coming out here and I need to go down the two C beads right here on this left hand side of my crystal and the third seed bead that was part of the first five gold seed beads we added to create the pendant and I'm going to pull it nice and snug and gentle and you can see that that really pulled everything into position even better and it really really looks nice and then I'm going to move up into the next two seed beads and I'm going to stop short of my crystal because I'm going to tie a half inch knot right there. So I'm coming up through the two seed beads. I'm going under the thread bridge between the two seed beads and my crystal. Pulling till I have my tiny little loop. Put my needle through and pull my knot between the seed beads and the smoky topaz crystal right there. Push forward around the outside edge. Continue to tie a few knots. Um, between the seed bead and the crystal and when you end pull your thread through your crystals pull your last knot through your crystals and then come out and end your thread all right guys so now I'm back and I'm ready to create my little chain so what I did was I cut a length of chain I just measured it out to where I want my pendant to sit on my neck uh, because of the romantic heirloomy style of this jewelry set, I really didn't want the necklace to hang too long. So I've gotten my chain. It's going to be more like the, uh, you know, opera length necklace. And I've gotten my little findings out. I've got my chain. I have three jump rings and my lobster claw clasp. The first thing I need to do is um, add my jump ring to my pendant. So I'm just going to take my pliers and my jump ring. And I'm going to open my jump ring. And guys, you'll have to forgive me because jump rings are not my friend. You know, I may wind up getting a different jump ring here because this one seems to be out of position just a little. And we'll see what we can do. So I've opened my jump ring and I'm just going to place my pendant up through the hole of the wire protector just like that. And then I'm going to close the jump ring up. And like I said, this one seems to be a little bit crappy. There's no problem. I've got plenty of them. So here we'll just start over. I'm going to pitch that jump ring right out of the way. We'll just pick another one. Open it. Add my pendant. And then close it. I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to to jump rings. And then, if you've watched a lot of YouTube videos like I have, you'll want to make sure that your, you know, your jump ring's closed really good right there. And mine's pretty closed. And then I'm just going to mash it with the pliers to make sure that it looks nice and professional. It's thoroughly closed. Everything's sitting side by side. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with my ends of my chain open my jump ring catch one end of my chain here and go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put my lobster claw clasp right on while I'm at it and grab my jump ring back give it a little close And then I'm just going to manipulate with my pliers to make sure that my closes, my seal is good. Everything looks really pretty and professional. I don't even danger of my chain slipping out. Everything's nice and closed. And I'm going to repeat on this end, uh, but I'm only going to add the jump ring. All right, so I've gotten my other jump ring out. And before I add my jump ring, I'm going to go ahead and run my chain through the jump ring on my pendant and then I'm going to check to make sure that I have it on there correctly 
by that, here's what I mean. I've got my chain running through. And my lobster claw, when I pull it up, I want the little lever portion of my lobster claw to be sitting on the outside edge of my chain. And it is. So now I know that everything's right. I'm going to pick up my little jump ring and put it on the other end of my chain. And then I'm just going to close this jump ring. And my project will be finished. And that's probably a good thing because my dog is sitting here wanting to go out now. And now I've gotten this jump ring closed. So I'm just going to take my flat nose pliers once again. And check to make sure that I have it the way that I want. I'm just going to give it a nice little flat mash just like that. And you can see that my little jump ring is closed nicely. Sitting flush. And I don't have to worry about it coming apart. Alright, so there's my necklace. And I think it's really, really pretty. And here are the earrings. And here's my beautiful ring. And I think it's a really gorgeous set of jewelry. If I had one more Topaz Rivoli, I would be... Most definitely making the bracelet, but I'm going to have to order one, so for the time being, this is what I have. If you'd like to see how to make the ring, I would like for you to leave me some comments in the comment section below and ask me about it. Really, I'll tell you exactly what I did. I just made the exact same component I made for the earrings and the pendant, and then I followed a tutorial here on YouTube from Sidonia's um, Handmade Jewelry. She did this band in a separate tutorial for a ring she did with a big giant um, fancy uh, Swarovski stone. But I love the band that she did. And I really think that it really makes this ring unique and pretty. So you can either let me know if you want me to show you how to do it. Or if you want to just go ahead and do it yourself. I just connected it here with the turquoise crystal there. And two topaz crystals on the side because it is a three row ring band. And on this side, I did the same thing, only I used two turquoise in the center topaz there because if you'll remember, only nine um, crystal sets of nine going around the outside edge. Didn't really think I was going to make a ring, but I did. And I'm just going to leave it just like it is because I love it. All right, so that's what I have for you guys now. And, um, really want to thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed to my channel. Thank you for supporting me during this past year when I've just been a beginner and trying to learn and being patient and everything. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I did change my business name. I'm no longer Blue Ridge Diva Designs, now the Alluring Bee Boutique. I have a website. Uh, not really up and running greatly yet. Still working on some of that aspect. I've been having to learn everything as I go. But I hope you think my tutorials have improved and you come back often and click subscribe and like for me. All right. Thanks, guys.